There is no doubt that these are unprecedented times for many different parts of the world. Not just economies, not just people, but the entire world is affected by the situation. And one industry in particular is really affected by this. It's the cruise industry. During this situation, there was more than one cruise ship that was stranded at sea. The reason for this, someone on board would get the virus. Someone had it, spread it to others, it started to spread extremely rapidly because it's very close quarters on these ships. And very early on in this situation, there were, there were more cases on board a ship than most places on land. So it goes to show a lot of cases were on one or two or three different ships all around the world. And as these cases started to develop, countries would not accept these ships to make port where they are. So if it's Japan, if it's China, if it's Korea, wherever it is, or even here in Florida, they would not allow the ships to stop here because the risk of infection to those who are living on the mainland is too great. Now I've made a video all about hygiene at sea. You can find it right there at the i button. Super helpful tips that I think the cruise industry should really consider as they begin to think about opening cruise ships up in the future. Now let's talk about that future a little bit. For a little while we've been thinking about the cruise industry and how this is really going to change cruising a lot for years to come. But now we're getting some more information from Meyer Wharf which makes a lot of the ships that are used not only by Disney but by many other cruise lines and they came out with a video and more information that really makes me think. The video is totally in German with English subtitles and they go over some of those key questions that some of us have about the future of not only cruising but shipbuilding for these cruise lines. I'm going to go over a few of those questions and the answers that they had and then we're going to go into some specifics about Disney and other cruise lines and where we may see the future of cruising go. The first big question, what's the impact of this virus having on the cruise market? And they go into some of those specifics about how in the past, for September 11th, financial crisis, they saw a really big reduction in cruising. But they've never, never before seen anything like this before because they have hundreds of cruise ships all over the world and every single one of them right now is at a standstill. They've seen markets go up and down. They've seen interest in cruising go up and down, but they have never seen the industry completely stop like this because of a situation. Not only has cruising completely stopped all around the world, but different government and government agencies have actually told citizens not to cruise. They have been that specific. They said, don't cruise, just just don't cruise. So that is going to have not only an impact now on the cruising industry, but think about what kind of impact it will have for two or three years. Now, as you would guess, the thing that brought me to this video were those new cruise ships that Disney has ordered. We're not so sure about the future anymore, but they gave us a little bit more insight about the future, the future of orders from Meyer Wharf. Based on some of their research, they have found that market observers expect between 50 to 75% resumption of global cruise ship fleet by the end of 2020. So they didn't really answer the question about future ships, but they answered the question about current cruising. So let's pretend for a moment, 50 to 75% of cruise seats that are usually filled on board. So let's just take Disney Cruise Line for a moment. Let's pretend they're always 100% full. Not the case, but let's pretend for a moment. Let's say they're 100% full all the time. Now market observers think that they'll be between 50 and 75% full until the end of 2020 at the very earliest. On that same note, Meyer Wharf indicated that they don't believe that the cruise line industry will be profitable in 2020 at all, totally understandable. A break-even point may come in 2021 just because of the financial losses, and in 2022 and beyond, they believe the cruise industry has the potential to be profitable again. But that would mean years, years of very, very difficult times for the entire cruise industry. That also means that they do not expect any new orders for cruise ships until the end of 2023 or 2024. Does that mean orders that are underway or orders that are under contract? They, they weren't specific. They didn't answer the question, probably because of the contracts, but they didn't say whether or not new ships that are either being built or have been planned to be built have any kind of delay on them. Even though they didn't say it specifically, we can safely assume that that means that the future production of some of these ships are not only going to be slowed down, some of them may be postponed 
for years to come. Now, from what we understand, the Disney Wish is already under construction, or it was before all of this started. Now, this may have changed, maybe the parts moved around, perhaps they kind of refigured everything, it's no longer under construction, I don't know, we don't know right now, because what's happening at Meyer Wharf and between Disney, we have no idea at this point until we get official information, but from what we've been told, it's already under construction. It was originally scheduled to be handed over to Disney at the end of 2021. Do I still believe that the Disney Wish is going to be under construction and going to be built in a couple years? Yes, I do. Do I still think it's going to be delivered at the end of 2021? That is much more difficult to predict. Disney is an extremely resilient company. They are going to make it through this, no doubt about it. It's a matter of timelines. Do they want to kind of continue with that debt? What does the contract look like with Meyer Wharf? All these different questions have to be answered for us to know whether or not the Disney wish will come maybe in 2022, possibly 2023. I would imagine we're going to see it, but it may be delayed a little while. Now that's the wish, but what about the other two ships that Disney had scheduled and has a contract with, I'm sure with Meyer Wharf, what about those? Are they still going to be under construction at all? Well, they answered a question similar to that one. Why do we have a problem now when our order book will last until 2023? Bernard Meyer, which we assume related to Meyer Wharf, managing director for 47 years, has never seen a situation like this with the cruise industry. And he mentioned that some of these contracts will have to be looked at. And he goes further into detail and talks about how eventually they're going to have to kind of discuss with their partners here how needs can be met. Because when you sign a contract, you kind of got to follow through with the contract, but maybe there's some flexibility. And he kind of, he kind of hinted at flexibility for timelines. Maybe instead of getting it done by us this year, maybe it'll be done two years from then, but it'll still be done by then at a certain cost. So, you know, maybe Meyer Wharf still gets that money, comes a little bit later, gives the cruise industry time to recover, perhaps something like that. I would imagine from what he said, perhaps there will be an extension to some of these. Maybe they won't be in three years, maybe not four years, maybe a little bit longer, but I think Meyer Wharf is still going to make these three ships in the future. It will just take more time. As a final note to the video, Bernard Meyer mentioned that he believes that the cruise industry will not make a full recovery to a point where they were now in, in 2020 or 2019 for 10 years. He thinks it will take that long for the cruise industry to recover. Now that does sound a little gloomy and doomy, right? It sounds like, oh, that doesn't sound good, Michael. 10 years, I don't like that. Well, you know, it may be 10 years. It's possible for some cruise lines. But then we get to some articles that, interestingly enough, say that cruising still pretty popular for those who want a vacation in the future. I did a bit of digging here and I found several articles all about those who have booked cruises previously, had them canceled, have cruise credit, and have now booked another cruise in 2021 or somewhere along those lines. And there are others who are making new reservations at somewhat discounted rates for 2021 or maybe the end of 2020 already. So it goes to show that there is definitely still interest in the cruising community, absolutely, for cruising. But new cruisers, it might take a little bit longer. So do I believe it's as cut and dry as saying, oh, it's 10 years before it gets back to the level we are now? I don't think so. I think that if the cruise industry does enough to show people that they're gonna be safe, they're gonna have a great time, they're gonna go through every single you know safety precaution imaginable to make sure that no one gets sick on board or as few people get sick on board as possible, I think we're going to see a turnaround much faster. But I think that some of those hygiene methods have to be followed. There are some things that they have to do to re-inspire people to feel that confidence of going cruising again. Now, with all of that being said, I personally am looking forward to getting back on a cruise when all of this is said and done. I love cruising. You know I do. I am looking forward to it. I'm going to book it as soon as all of this is over. Those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear from you. Do you think the Disney cruise ships will be delayed by a few years? Do you think the cruise industry will take 10 years to get back on its feet? Let me in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being a part of the magic with me today. Until next time, have a magical day.